when developing these keys, um, we've put them into production. Understand that these keys, the encryption keys that you're using, have a given lifespan. Um, and when we specifically look at, at the, the requirements within 3.6, it states that you have to rotate the keys at the end of their defined crypto period. Um, so if you are using encryption in your environment, the assessor is going to be asking you for what is your defined crypto period? Now, once again, it's not up to us as assessors to define what your crypto period is, uh, but it is up to us to determine whether or not you've done your due diligence uh, around the, key, the, the time and period that you use your key. Now, if you as, a, as an organization, if I come in to assess you and say, hey, Johnny, what is your crypto period? And you say, well, Jeff, you know that our crypto period is every year and uh, we rotate the key then. I might you know, say, fine, that's great. Well, how did you define your crypto period being a year? Um, and just because that's what you've always done or you know, that's just because that's what happens is typically not enough. Understand that a crypto period does not define a, a uh, necessarily define a period of length. A crypto period is not a month, a year, a week, three years, six years, whatever. A crypto period is typically a number of transactions that a, that a key is good for. So as a given example, uh, you need to take in multiple factors. I would, I would recommend that you do uh, some Google searching on defining a crypto period. But, but effectively what we're doing is we're taking the key strength, the key length, the encryption algorithm that we're using, uh, we're taking the exposure to the key, we're taking uh, there's a multiple of, of variables that go into defining what a crypto period is. So we kind of take all of these numbers and we crunch them. And the output of that is not a month, a week, a year. It's a number of transactions. So the output of your process might say this encryption algorithm or this encryption uh, key that we have is good for a thousand transactions, or it might be good for one transaction, or it might be good for a million transactions. So now that we have the number of transactions that the key is good for, then we have to look at, okay, well, how many transactions do you process in a year? If your key is good for a million transactions and you do a million transactions a year, okay, that's fine. You. Uh, you know, you can rotate that key out for every year because the, the crypto period is a year. But let's say that your the, the defined crypto period is a million transactions. However, you do two million transactions a year. After that millionth and one transaction, that key has become weakened, and we would expect you to rotate the key out at that point. In that scenario, your encryption uh, period, your crypto period, is really six months rather than a year. So as assessors, what we're looking for is not just that you have uh, defined a crypto period, but we really kind of want to get our hands around what have you done to define that crypto period. So after that's been defined, then we're going to ask you for evidence that your key has been rotated. Uh, this, this evidence can be a change control, right? So it can be uh, just some artifact to state that you've rotated the key. Uh, at no point ever should your assessor ask you to see what your encryption key is, uh, see what the old one is or see what the new one is. They're just looking for evidence that the keys have actually been rotated.